All right, we're back at the craft table and we're making some welcome bears. Now, in the past I made a video actually on making a welcome bear. That one was based off a pattern sold through Winfield Collection. And here he is. He's a little skinny, you don't get much uh, fish to eat, but he was a cool project and I had fun making him. But I kind of wanted to put my own little twist onto it. And I know there's a million different uh, welcome bears out there for sale. But these, I wanted it, one, to be something easy to make and fun to make and cheap and have potential to sell it and feel good about it. All right, so this is kind of what I came up with. These are the three prototypes, I'll call them. And I, you know, I tried various things on these, like paws, you know, like these are rounded. I wanted to see if I like that. These are kind of squared on top. And these, which I really didn't like that much, are, are pretty big. And even played with things like on the feet. Like I rounded this guy's feet, and then this guy's feet are more square. And nose, you know, this guy's nose is longer and skinny, or muzzle is longer and skinny, and he's smiling, where this guy's got a flat face. You know, just obvious stuff. Playing around, see what I like better and what I didn't like, so... When I turn around and make like a batch of 20 of these, you know, I'm, I know what I want to design into them. All right. Now for these, if I'm going to make something and I'm going to sell it, it's got to meet two criteria. One, it's got to be fun. I got to enjoy making it, which I did. These are fun. They're easy to make. They're pretty stress-free and the time flies when you're working on them. And two, the juice has to be worth the squeeze, right? So the numbers on that part of it, these things, you know, I could break it down if, if you wanted, but we'll just keep it simple here. They're made out of a two by eight. They're about 12 inches tall, little less. So you could get eight, eight of them out of a two by eight by eight. But the reality is you ain't ever gonna get eight, but uh, say you get seven. But anyhow, I broke it down to figure out the cost and with the wood, the paint, the clear coat, the eyes, basically you're under $5 for materials, right? And two screws. There's a screw in each foot holding it to this little board here. All right, so you're under $5 in materials. And then for me, with little woodworking crafts, what I like to do if I'm going to sell something, I double the materials. And that covers your kind of your... Things like your Dremel bits, your drill bits, your electricity, everything else. You know, I just kind of lump it in and I figure doubling the material cost, in most cases, just feels like it covers everything else. So basically, I have figure 10 bucks cost into this. And now time-wise, you got to figure that out. Now, I do crafts because I enjoy working on them. I enjoy making little things. It's fun. And even though it's fun, you know, you like to get a little money back for your time because I like to buy new tools and, you know, for stuff up north on the future homestead, you know, this is where most of the money comes from, from little things like this, little bears or bird houses or bird feeders or little end tables or a little chainsaw carving, stuff like that. But anyhow, back to the bear. So when I made these three, I batched them out uh, as I was making them. And every time I'd go into the garage, I'd click a little stopwatch and I kept track. And when I was done with these three, granted these are the first ones I've made, I divided the time out and it was 42 minutes, a bear. So 42 minutes each one. Does that mean you could sit, I could sit down and in 42 minutes make a bear? No, because it's a little bit each night because you got your gluing pieces on and then you wait till the next day to work on it again because you're letting the glue dry and then you're painting it and then you're waiting till the next day to work on it because you want the paint to dry you know and then you're clear coating it and then you know stuff like that but basically it's about 42 minutes of bear and these being the first ones I would expect that time to drop dramatically as if I batched like 20 of them, right? So I'm figuring we'll round the 42 minutes up to an hour because 
what if I'm out there drinking beer? It might take me an hour of beer then. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though I expect the time frame to go down, we're going to round it up to an hour. And I figured like the minimum to make a project worthwhile is 20 bucks an hour. So now you got our $10 materials and our 20 bucks an hour. So you're at 30 bucks. And then just to add a little topping onto it, we'll, I'll probably try selling these when I make a batch for around 35 bucks. Watch. I don't think it's too shabby. Cause basically you got here, you got the little bear. Ah, you spin him around. It's got a cute little butt. <laughs> And there he is. You know, I I, th I think I'll be able to sell them for that. And if not, I'll have a bunch of little bears with goofy little signs. But, uh, yeah, just give you an overall. See, like this guy, I changed how I did the back end, you know. And this guy over here was actually the first one I built. And the paws are, are definitely too big. But, uh You know, he's got a little bit of a butt too, some hips. And I actually kind of like how I did the fur better, but it took a little longer to do the fur kind of finer. I used a, a different bit in my Dremel to do the fur. But uh, that's enough talking about them. Let's make these things, eh? All right, we're back at the craft table. We're gonna make a couple sign holding bears. Now I know I've made some of these in the past on a video, but uh, this is, even though it looks similar, it's there's enough design changes that I feel it warrants a new video. I'm even starting with a different type of wood. Okay, so now I'm using a standard 2x8 I bought at Home Depot. I'm cutting it into 12 inch lengths, okay? And the reason I'm going with a thicker board is you can get way more, uh, when you power carve it, you can get way more details into it. And there's a fine line on making these. You don't want to make it too realistic and you don't want to make it too cartoony. Because either way it gets, it gets, it adds more stress to it. So I kind of found a happy medium that at least makes me happy and keeps the project fun. All right, so after I draw him out, I take him over to the bandsaw and then I cut them out on the bandsaw. All right, that's simple enough. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna end up gluing pieces on to give them a bigger snout. And then I'm gonna glue pieces on for the feet and the hands. Cause first you got a spacer block and then you're gonna have paws glued on to hold the sign. All right, and then where these lines are, that's where a lot of the power carving details are gonna be. Like I kinda hollow this out and I kinda give him a chest and a little bear belly. <laughs> and then I carve his feet and paws out. And the whole goal of these is to make them in under an hour each. That keeps me at where, like, if I sell them, where I feel good about it yet. On, on how much money I made for my time. All right, enough talking. Let's get uh, making these things so I can show you what they look like. All right, after I get it all rough cut on the bandsaw, I bring it over here. And I take the grinder to it to soften these edges, kind of round the bear off, put a little slope on the back of his head, and it just speeds up the process using the grinder over the Dremel. So uh, that's what I'll do now. All right, this is what he looks like roughly after I uh, hit him with the grinder. Now I'll take the Dremel, and I'll take a little uh, a bit like that, and I'll start some carving. Once we get everything roughed out, then it's back to the craft table and we gotta glue on a few more things. First things we gotta glue on are our spacers. The sign will end up sitting on these. And then uh, after these are rough to fit this spot right here, then I will glue on a piece that will be carved into a paw. All right, you notice my pieces are cut pretty rough. I do that because it's quicker for me to shape them with the Dremel once they're glued on than trying to cut them precisely and maybe be too small before I glue them on. So I always rough them out pretty good and then I just clean them up with the Dremel. Okay, so you got the spacers that'll go here and I'll glue that on. And then you have your uh, feet, and I'll glue that on, and then the muzzle. So I'll just glue that on, and again, I just rough it out. It just seems way more timely and efficient that way. And then once that stuff's glued on, I'll hit it back. I got this little bit here. It's just a cheap Dremel bit. Picked it up at Home Depot, and that's what I do the hair with, all right? When that stuff is kind of glued on, this will be what the next section looks like, all right? Now he'll have his, his feet carved out. And his hand's carved out. I still got to glue a little tail on. That's what he's in here for. I'm gonna, I glue a little block on and then I carve a tail out of it. So that's, that's the next step. And then we'll have to make the base. And I'll show you how I do that. But first I got to get these pieces glued on. 
Now with the feet, if I can get glue to come out, the only thing critical with the feet is to have uh, the flat part line up with the bottom. And I've tried this different ways with clamping it on and with just like pushing them on real hard, kind of squeezing them nice and tight and then just letting them sit. And that seems to work just fine. I, I don't, uh, I haven't run across where I really said, man, I wish I would have clamped that. <laughs> but may maybe clamping it would be better. But uh, I haven't noticed any negatives to not clamping it yet. All right, we'll get uh, these glued on. And for these, you want the flat part up. All right, so usually I glue them on like that, get them on. And then I'll take my little ruler and I just kind of get them so they're straight on there. It's easier if you can see it. So I'm going to actually turn it so I can see it. All right, so I get them on there. And then it doesn't make that big a difference, but you just uh, tap it with that a little bit so, uh, you know, it's roughly straight across. And that glue will carve right out of there. Any little glue you got oozing out that you touch it with the Dremel and it's gone like magic. All right, now the beak, muzzle, nose, mouth, whatever you want to call the whole uh, kit and caboodle here. Got some glue on there. Push her down. All right, now I'll let that sit overnight. And then this guy, I got to glue a tail on the carve. Okay, so what I'll do is I actually give these guys kind of a little bit of a butt crack. And I go right above that, and that's where I glue the tail on. Okay, so this one I'll put the glue on here. And glue's cheap. I use lots of it. And I think using lots of it helps because it fills the void, so you don't have any, like, gaps or whatever after you have it on there. And you start carving it. All right. That looks about centered. That'll be his tail. Now we'll leave that set overnight. And... Until this dries, I can't really do much else, so I'll uh, stop filming and I'll bring you back when this is ready to work on. Alright, the glue is dried on hands, feet, and mouth area there. So I'll take this uh, cut saw bit here, and I'll show you how I use that, and why I'm not so concerned about not being that close when I cut these out, because this cut saw bit just eats right through that stuff. Alright, I'll fire it up and I'll show you. Now when I'm using a Dremel, the reason I didn't have to draw onto the piece that I had glued on too much was because as you start cutting away at it with the Dremel, you see this glue line. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but I'll use that bit on the Dremel and just keep taking away material until I see this line of where the piece I glued on for the snout is meeting the, the head, basically. So I get that dark glue line all the way around, and then I know I'm at roughly where I drew the original muzzle on the, onto the bear. All right? So once I have it kind of roughed out, now I'll take my pen... And I'll draw on exactly how I want my nose to be because I want my nose to be 3D. So the nose is going to stick out past where the mouth would be. So now I'll take the pen and I'll design my nose and my mouth and uh, we'll cut that part out. Alright, for the eyes, I usually drill the holes before I paint it, just so it makes it easier for me to, I can draw on it and line it up. Alright, now first thing I do, I'm using these kind of eyes, they're little plastic eyes I get off of Amazon. Alright, they're extremely cheap. And they got this little uh, prong you stick in. So basically what I do is I eyeball where I want the eyeballs. And sometimes I'll measure, you know, like I'll take my center line off of my nose. And then I will measure out, like say this one, about a half inch in each, each direction from the center line. And then I draw a little mark. Woo! Almost knocked the drill off the table. Draw a little mark, and I drill a hole with a drill bit that's smaller than this, right? On the prong that I'm going to stick in. And then I eyeball it again and look and see if it's level, because if I use a smaller drill bit, I have enough room for error. I can move the hole a little bit either way so my eyes aren't off-center or crooked or one higher than the other, whatever. And then once I'm happy with where those holes are, I take a little bigger bit, and then I drill it out. And I'll even uh, egg the holes out a little bit so there's still a little bit of movement in there. So when I'm doing the final assembly, 
I got my little dab of glue on here and I stick it in and I can just move the eye just a hair before the glue sets and then uh, it's good or at least to where I like it whether it's good or not that's a matter of opinion but uh, I'll get the holes drilled on this guy and this guy over here and then I'll paint them up all right now I'm gonna start painting these things I'm gonna cover the nose because I'm gonna turn this into a brown bear and the nose is always a lighter color on those things and black bears so first thing I'll do I'll use some spray paint but I will go over the spray paint with uh, craft paint and a brush just because I like the finish look better. It's just the spray paint does so much better coverage, it just speeds things up dramatically. So I always start with a little spray paint before I move to the craft paint. And this is Gloss Espresso, if you're wondering. Alright, I'll come back when this is completed. Alright, now I need a base for the bears to stand on. So basically I got some old cherry wood here. Um, I'm just going to cut off roughly about six inches and then I'll take it in and I'll drill two holes in it so where I can ram two screws up into the feet of the bear. I'll show you how I do that. Now I'm going to actually flip it over and cut it this way just because then it's up tight against the fence here. Make it a little safer to cut it. All right. There. That's a perfect little base for that bear to stand on. All right. Last time you seen this bear, I spray painted him brown. Well, after he got spray painted brown, I took a little craft paint and went over to the brown, filled in some spots, tried to give it a little depth. And then I took uh, a little khaki craft paint and I painted the, the muzzle. And then I took black paint and I painted the nose and the mouth. And on the white one, basically spray painted them white. And then I took white craft paint, went over some spots. And then on both, and then painted the nose black and the mouth black. And then after that was done, I took some clear coat, just a matte uh, clear coat. And I sprayed a couple layers of clear coat on it. All right. Now, basically, I'm going to take these bears. And I got these pieces of cherry wood that I cut for the base. And basically, I just kind of eyeball this. I pick whatever side I want facing forward. And I set the bear on it, kind of center them. And then I kind of draw a little line on the back at about the center of the feet. And then I move it ahead. And I draw where I'm going to drill my holes. All right, so I kind of set the bear back a little bit. But basically, what's going to happen, I'm going to drill two holes. And then I'm going to pre-drill going into these feet so it doesn't split on me so I'll drill the holes all the way through here see where the screw is going to hit and then I will pre-drill and then I will screw these to this base well now it's time to make the signs that the bears are going to hold basically what I do is just kind of rough them out I'm not the greatest artist so I kind of simplify it right I cut two inch strips of cedar or pine whatever this happens to be cedar and then I use this cut saw bit right here um, and then I just basically, uh, on my two inch strip of cedar, I measure like a quarter inch from the edge, draw a line, quarter inch from the edge, draw a line. And then I just rough draw where it's going to make it look like the edge is kind of broken. So I'll cut that out with the scroll saw or the band saw, whatever, whatever trips my trigger at the moment. And then for the letters, usually I try and space them about a quarter inch apart. All right. And I try and make the thickness of the letter about a quarter inch. And on letters like, uh, like a zero or an O. Yeah, I, I make it three quarters of an inch from side to side, right? But some letters, like a T, you know, I may go a full inch just because it looks better with, with the longer top, you know? You, you gotta modify it. I mean, it isn't... There's no, I don't think, any strict rules. It's whatever you think looks good. And whatever I think looks good, the next guy may be like, well, or gal, maybe like, that sucks, that's horrible. But uh, this is what I like, so this is the way I do it. And then after I carve them out with this, then I take black spray paint, and I just spray paint the whole works, leave it sit overnight, and then I take my little sander, little Milwaukee sander I got here, and I run over it, just sand the top, and I got to blow this one out yet, it'll brighten it up. But uh, after I sand the top, then I take that matte clear coat, and I clear coat both sides of the sign, and that brings out the color in the, in the bare wood, and kind of brightens up the black, and I think it looks really good. So I'll just do your Acme welcome sign for the brown bear, and then the polar bear, I'm going to do a sign that says cool it. So basically that's it. I'll do a little, uh, little of the carbon here. Show you basically how it comes out. Basically, I just kind of follow the edges. And then, once I have a line drawn in there, like when I'm finishing up, basically I just take it and I go like this, and it kind of gives a nice smoother appearance at the bottom of the hole. So, this is fairly boring to watch, and I got a couple of these signs back there I got to do, because I made 10 bears total. So, 
I'm gonna get caught on these signs and paint them up and I can pretty much show you the finished product then. All right, now it's time to attach the bears to the base. So I stick the screws in here, put them so they rest like that, and now I'll take the bear, kind of line him up on the screws here, get him where I want him standing on this base, where he looks looks good, and then I push down, make some marks on them feet, and that's where the screws are going to go. Then I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to drill some holes in here so that uh, it doesn't split when I screw the screws in. Alright, so here's the eyeballs. Put a little dab of glue on them. And then I put them in a the hole. Push them all the way home. Alright, once you get them in, like I said, I made it so you can still move them around a little bit. So that means you gotta make sure they're level. Alright, so once you get them level, then you gotta leave the bear alone so the glue can dry. So there's a polar bear with blue eyes. Now I'll do the brown bear and I'll show you a, a couple of bears I've done. Alright, to wrap this video up, I figured I'd just show the bears one more time and then while I was making them, I did kind of a prototype of a Sasquatch. <laughs> he didn't quite turn out though. Uh, I made a few mistakes. You know, the face, I didn't like the face. It, it makes him look like a more of a, a stereotype lumberjack, you know? The big old beard. And, and then the beard interfered with he can't hold the two-inch sign. So I screwed up there. Uh, if I were to do one again, the face, I would uh, make it more monkey-looking, I think. And maybe not quite the beard. I'm kind of looking at pictures of the Jack Link Sasquatch, and that's probably what I'd go for. A couple other things that, like if you're experimenting, I tried. I put glitter on here. I thought glitter would look cool on this little piece of cherry, and it really, in my humble opinion, didn't. <laughs> so, you, you can't get them all right. But, oh, and then the eyes. I tried another experiment seeing it was like a prototype i put the eyes in before i clear coated them and that made the eyes really cloudy i wasn't sure what would happen and now i know so definitely if you're building something and you're using the little 10 millimeter plastic eyes uh don't put them in until after you're finished uh, clear coating it but there i just figured i'd throw him in the video show you other things i'm experimenting with here Related to these little welcome bears because I honestly think these would be cool on a work desk You know we can have the sign say anything Anything a guy wants, you know like free hugs who doesn't like free hugs? <laughs> All right, I guess I'll uh, wrap this up. I want to say thanks for watching and I guess you know, I'm I really debate on uh, if it would be a copyright infringement because this is the original Winfield one, right? I feel like these are significantly different. But you can only be so much different because they still got to look like a bear at the end. Because I was thinking of trying to figure out how I could attach my little pattern I made for these. Because now I got a little pattern I made. I could draw it on a piece of paper and attach it. Then if someone else wanted to make these, they could use my pattern. But I guess I'm not too sure because I don't even have the pattern for this Winfield bear anymore but I know they they have pretty tight copyrights on their stuff and I you know I definitely don't want to get in trouble but I don't know if anyone has any advice or maybe I could email you the 
If you wanted a pattern, I could maybe email you a pattern if you got a hold of me. But uh, yeah, if you have any advice, I don't know if I could get in trouble for doing that. I feel like it's different enough. It shouldn't be copyright, but yeah, give me your opinion on that. I, and I'm not sure if anyone would be interested in a pattern or not anyhow. But uh, yeah, I guess that's that. Thanks for watching the video and have a good one.